Hello. Hi, how are you? We've had a situation here in the past with the Zoom interviews where the people on the screen cannot hear the applause. Did you hear okay. any applause? You did uh, not hear any applause. No. So I can just tell you there's resounding applause. Oh, good. Oh, that's exciting. Cheering, I wish, cheering oh, and hooting there. and hollering and all those kinds of things. Oh, that's so good. It's an amazing film and uh, a lot to talk about, uh, which I can't wait to do. But I, I, I first got to find out how did you get onto this story? What, what uh, induced you to, to make this film? Well, you know, I did a film about Gilda Radner and I just love, I was looking for a similar story of an amazing woman and an amazing, I wanted something that felt good. And hearing about Sherry Lewis and Lamb Chop made me feel good. And as I started to explore more about Sherry, I thought she really deserves to have a film about her because she's so much more talented than people think she is. So that's kind of how I got involved. But did you know anything about Sherry before you got involved? I mean, after the Gilda film? Um, not really, because I was between the two ages of, you know, she had her early shows in the in the 60s and her later show in the 90s. I mean, but I did know Sherry Lewis and I did know Lamb Chop. And for some reason, I had a Lamb Chop lunchbox <laughs> at some point. So I knew that hey. I just didn't know anything about Sherry. But I knew Sherry and Lamb Chop and, you know, the, uh, Hush Puppy. Like, I knew the puppets. Well, it's just, it's remarkable to me. I'm uh, ancient and I was very young when Sherry was on the first show. Um, and I knew about it then when I was really little. And then uh, sort of as I grew up, I didn't know much more about it. And I didn't really tune into the part in the 90s when she had a show again. Um, but uh, just such a, uh, uh, you went so deep and uh, found out so much more about her. She was an amazing, amazing, uh, so super talented and super smart. And just just a real, it was described as uh, her teacher, uh, the uh, entertainer was described as a force of nature. And she was completely beyond a force of nature. So once you dug into it, um, yeah, and you, and you framed the story. I mean, you had a lot of footage to work with, and you did the interviews. Um, did how did you line that up? How did you get, get going with? You started with the footage, and then you started the to piece together the interviews. How did the how was that process like? Well, I mean, I love archival, so I do as much research as I can, and I tried to watch um, any kind of interviews with Sherry, find whatever I could about her, and then I started talking to her friends and family members, and you know, on the phone before we did the interviews. And started learning, you know, about the J.W. Cooper thing was a total surprise. Um, I had found out in, um, somebody had told me, and then I went into the Schromberg Center in New York, and I found letters between J.W. Cooper's daughter and Sherry. And I thought, like, that was pretty amazing. And I knew that David Copperfield was a big fan because he had um, all of uh, Sherry's archives in his museum in Las Vegas. And then I found out, you know, the magical connection. So, it, you know, it's a work in progress. It kind of grows, it grows and grows and grows. So, so, but I love archive and I feel like sometimes you, you hear things that you don't hear from other people, you know, so. That, was well, kind of I, that is amazing. I was I was surprised at what an authority David Copperfield was. Uh, how did that come to be? That that I mean, you you found that he had her archives in his museum. What? How did you come onto that? Well, he knew. Uh, um, Sherry's dad was very famous, and he is very famous in the magic um, uh, circle. So right. when David was young, he was part of the magical group. So he knew Abe. He didn't know him directly, but he knew from the magical association. And so that's kind of, and David also, I mean, it's not in the film, but he had wanted to be a ventriloquist when he first started. So he has a great love of ventriloquy. And also he met Sherry over the years and he just loved her work ethic. He felt like they had a very similar work ethic in the sense that they just work, work, work until everything is perfect. Uh, well, the, it's just absolutely incredible. And I love the fact that her father was the official magician of New York City. I mean, what a yeah. great gig that is. God, that's going to be a <laughs> wonderful gig. I don't know. How, I don't. Did they still have one? No, I mean, there's a New York Times in his New York Times obituary. That's what it is. The official magician of New York City. So uh, I don't I know. I think that. he's the only one. <laughs> That was great. A lot of the a lot of the early stuff was amazing. Uh, there was the fact of uh, her mother, the way her mother brought her up, 
and would never read her the stories in which the prince came to save the ineffectual woman. Um, I mean, she was a total proto-feminist uh, before that was even a consideration, I think. Um, I was really impressed by that. And, and obviously the way that she grew up, you know, just to keep playing out over and over and over again uh, from what, the, what her father trained her to do and, the, and not only the skills, but the attitude the attitude that her mother had and her, that her father had. And that's, uh, that's beautifully comes out in the story. I think um, the, 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 the chapters um, which, you know, so few of us are aware of, I think then, and, and that it really deserve to be seen because just not only the educational part, the advocating for that, but so many talents, my God, the, that period when she was not having a show and she was trying to make it in Hollywood and Las Vegas and then the part where she's playing at state fairs and and just just never stopping and always going, and it was just really incredible. And I'm so glad you captured all of that. That you you found that was was that all from the, the archival stuff that you were able to dig up. Yeah, and just going online, and I had found an interview that Ken Levine, who we um, interviewed in the film, talked about. He did like an article about Sherry, and he talked about being in the audience and um, when she did a straight. Uh, state fair and I was like oh my god this is like great because Sherry was off of television for almost 40 years like so I mean she she was on like Hollywood Squares and she was on but she didn't have her own show and that's what she always wanted so you know she just kept going until she got it again well, I, I think that the way that you framed the story would be with that interview, and I'm not sure who it was um, that was asking her, where do you, where do we find the real Sherry Lewis? And you kept returning to that interview. Who was that? Yeah. Um, that was a at one with interview. And uh -huh. that was one of the only, Sherry was very, she was challenging in some ways because she was an ultimate performer and she was always very aware of the camera. So in her interviews, it's it was, you know, it was a little difficult. And then with that interviewer, because she must have, he must be amazing interviewer. And also I think they had a, a friendship. He, he saw a side, of, I saw sides of her that I didn't see in any other interviews. So that's why we use that a lot. Cause I think well, it was pretty revealing. Well, and it was beautiful, as I say, because where do we find the real Sherry Lewis? And then throughout the rest of the film, we, we find the real Sherry Lewis to the degree that we can. Um, I thought she was such an intellectual. She was so brilliantly smart and um, and and certainly applied that to her career, but she applied it to a lot of things and her relationships and everything else. I just thought her tenacity was beyond belief. Um, the the uh, you, you must have had some fun with that uh, psychedelic footage. Where did you get all that stuff from? <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, that was, that was a, you know, that was, you know, you find research and that was, <coughs> excuse me, when, you know, I found about her husband would go to Esalon and, you know, he wrote all these new age books and it was just a really fun period, you know, because that was nothing. Everyone told me that was not Sherry. Like Sherry was not new age. Sherry was not drug. Sherry was not psychedelic. But, you know, she loved her husband and, you know, those were the times too. So and, well, you uh, certainly captured it. I was, I was part of that period too. So. <laughs> Timothy was, Leary, you know, the captured beautifully. Um, and the thing is that uh, throughout the film, you keep coming back to um, it, does she have spirituality? Does she have religion? Does she have those kinds of things? And there was at three different points in the film. She talks about, those issues. I, I remember the, the, she said in that interview, she said she was looking for God in her puppets and she couldn't find one until she found Lamb Chop. And the, the idea that you're looking for God in your puppets and the, the fact of the extension of the puppets, the, her puppets being an extension of her, but just one extension, as she says later on when she's conducting, there's a music as an extension too. So I thought that was brilliant. And then when it was about um, the seeking that her husband was seeking and every, all these seekers. And she said, there's nothing to seek because it's just the unfolding. And that's reiterated at the very end when she says that uh, the only real religious ceremony is life itself, which I think should be, um, you know, engraved all over <laughs> the planet as far as I'm concerned, but uh, it might solve a lot of diff difficulties in between religious and so forth. But um, so without ever seeming to, she was, clearly introspective and and looking at those things and i think that it's kind of brilliant the way you brought that out and through the interviews and everything else um 
how did you find out? How did you know? Was it from the Gilda film that you found out that there was a Saturday Night Live creature who had uh, a, a Sherry Lewis tattoo on her leg? Um, well, we were just looking for people, you know, inspired by by uh, Gilda. And I love comedians. So I always think, and I think Sherry's a comedian. To me, she's, Absolutely. she's a comedian. And um, you don't think of her that way. And we were just looking to see who, you know, we heard different people were different fans. And then um, through uh, somebody who told me somebody and they're like, oh my God, she has a, a, a tattoo. They found like on our Instagram uh, page, she has, uh, Sarah Sherman has the, uh, and she was a huge, huge Sherry fan. Like no, since they, she was a kid. They, they were incredible. And the, the, her ability as a dancer, as a singer, as a comedian, as a magician, and all those things that she kept doing for the the entire time, I, I found was just kind of uncanny. Um, and the uh, the Muppeteer uh, with uh, the the black girl, the Muppeteer, Megan. I can't remember her name. Yeah. Megan. And uh, she was obviously inspired by it um, and, and inspired by Sherry in different ways. All these different generations that that figured it out. And the way she pulled it together, um, I just can't say enough about how you how you brought her to life for us. Um, and and it, it just just briefly, I mean, beyond the fact that she learned Japanese and did her entire show in Japanese, and then and then had that story about the that lamb chop was better in Japanese than she was. Um, but the conducting, she learned to conduct from yeah. her music director, basically, and then well, was conducting symphonies. Yeah, also watching her mother, um, you know, because her yeah. mother was the the music supervisor for New York, so her right, mother. Right, was, right. So that was part of her. I don't know. Sherry could do anything if she put her mind to it. I guess so. It was brilliant. I mean, it's not in the film, but her 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 father would teach her these, um, like card card things that like memorization of cards, and she could memorize amazingly amount of things. So. You know, she's oh. very brilliant, very articulate too. Probably, probably outlawed in Las Vegas because she could count cards. I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have a minute or two to uh, get some questions from the audience. But I, before we get there, I just want to ask, what's the what's the future for this film? Because like so many of the films that we've seen at this festival, it deserves to be seen by a lot, a lot of people. So is there a future for this film? Yeah, and right now, um, you know, it's going to do festival, festival run, and then we're talking to different distributors right now. So I hope it has, we're pulling for you and uh, I hope it has a long and and lustrous life uh, because it's really, really worthy of it. And she's so worthy of it. Um, uh, People like me who know her from the youth, people that don't know her at all, but so many more dimensions than I could ever have imagined. And I think you brought it out beautifully. Um, Do we have some questions from anyone in the audience? Because you won't be able to hear them or you might be able to hear them at this microphone. Okay, I think we're good. But thank you so much for uh, spending no the time with us. Not even, thank you. Not even, not even one question. Well, uh, wait a minute. We do have. You see, okay. you, you shamed them. That's good. <laughs> uh, I love the film. I, I of course watched it. Uh, Sherry Lewis is a little girl. Where is Lamb Chop now? Oh, with Mallory. Mallory with Mallory. So Mallory performs. Sherry's daughter performs with um, Lamb Chop, and so um, she's with Mallory. She's been performing, like, since, I think Mallory tells the story that when Sherry passed away, people started saying to her, is Lamb Chop dead too, is the story that she tells. And so she picked up Lamb Chop, and so she performs with Lamb Chop now. Now, does she know ventriloquism? I know that she was a a producer for her mother, and that was a beautiful tale. Uh, And the end of her life, the, the, the last show was just everybody, I can't imagine not being choked up by that and then taking lamb chop from her. Um, but did she have training as a ventriloquist as well? No, she just did. You know, that whole family can do anything, you know? <laughs> well, that's she beautiful. Naturally to her. She's really good, too. Oh, great. Great. And so, um, what, uh, go ahead. Wait. Another question. I love the film, too. It was just what a talented woman. It was just amazing that she could do anything and she was so beautiful. Uh, my question is, what are you doing next? Who are you, what um, woman have you decided to fo- focus on for your next film? Well, 
I'm still looking. I have one that I'm trying to work on that I can't say that it hasn't been working out. And then I have a new project that I can't say yet either, but it's more of an, <laughs> an it's a more of an anthology of, of several women. But that is my my focus. I mean, at Gilda and Sherry, there has to be an, a third person. I just haven't found that person yet. Well, you've you picked two people that were sort of beyond beyond imagining in terms of their talents. So congratulations to you for that. And uh, thank you so much for bringing it to us. You have another question? We're good. Thank you so much, Lisa. I really oh, thank appreciate you. it. It was great. I wish I could have been there, but next, well, next time. Yes, we're glad to see you in whatever way we can. And thank you very much.